You've like taking the time to constantly create different keyframes and animations for different clone effects or roto effects. Boring. If not, you can download my editor's essential bundle pack. Simply go into effects and drag and drop into your mask clip. What's good? I'm back with another video. Before I get into it, I want to give out two shout outs real quick. First, I want to give a shout out to Asher Roland. He's an up and coming DaVinci Resolve content creator utilizing Asher Roland's script called Anim Utility, which is basically a plugin that allows you to create animations without the use of keyframes, which came in very handy in updating my Essentials Editor bundle pack. I'm going to leave a link to his page in the description down below. Do me a favor, show him some love, and let's see if we can get his channel to a thousand subscribers. And secondly, I want to give a shout out to a local Miffian. If you need tattoos, videography, photos, wedding photography, Pretty much anything under the sun, hit on my guy, M-Town Shooter. His channel is linked in the description down below and check out some of his content. Now the effects in this video are updated features from my editor, the Essential Bundle Pack. It's a collection of effects that I released in one pack full of titles, effects, transitions, sound effects, LUTs. If you've already purchased the Essential Bundle Pack, you should already have an email letting you know the update was released. If you do not have an email, let me know either by the Discord need help section or hit me up on Instagram so I can get that over to you. Also, much appreciation to all the early adopters. The biggest part of the update is these drag and drop effects. So here I have my mask layer at the top, which basically has a transparent background. I'm gonna go into the effects panel under effects and under Godsend Essential, you see all the effects that are here. So this clone effect here, the first one animates on the X axis, so it's go basically left and right. The second one activates on the Y axis, goes go up and down. And the third one's on the Z axis, so it creates like this zoom in effect. You basically a clone of the subject pop up behind them. Each one of the clone effects has been redesigned to only bring in two clones. And each clone has its own individual controls. So if you don't want the two clones, you can easily just turn one off. To go over the controls, the start position is basically where your clone is going to start. Typically, it's going to be a zero. The end position is where the clone is going to animate to. So if I move this around, you can see the clones begin to animate. You basically just move your playhead to a point within the clip and then reposition your subject using the end position. And then I'm gonna go down here and change this one to over here. This, this magic mask was not done very well. That's why he looks so bad. After you set your position, all you gotta do is play the clip and it animates on its own. How long it takes the animation to play out can be controlled by the timing. So if I want the animation to take longer, I just turn this up and then when I play it back, Notice this clone here has a slight delay in the animation compared to this one. Now my timeline is 24 FPS, and these controls are basically the frame. So if I type in 24, it's gonna take a full second for that animation to play out. Which is not all that long since this clip is only a second and 16 frames. The animation start time and end time controls when that animation is gonna start. So I go down here to the second clone, and I turn this up. You notice the clone disappeared. So basically, once you get to this playhead, that's when the animation will start. If you don't want the subject to animate out, you can just simply cut off the animation out. And then it will just animate your subject and it will just hold the position. And the anim end timing makes it do the same thing. It just controls how quick or how long you want the animation out to play out. So if you turn the timing up on this one, you basically have to think about it and invert it. You turn the timing up on this one, the animation out will play out faster than normal. So I cut back on the animation out. I'm turning this up to 24. So basically the start time and the end time have the same amount of frames. You know the animation will slide in and then slide right back out. With the clone effects, if you want more than two clones, you can go back in and grab the clone effect and drop it back onto your clip and it'll create more clones. You can just continuously stack the clone effect. If you encounter any problems of getting these effects to render cache while editing, just right click, go into render cache, fusion effects, and then select the names. So I'm gonna click on both of these. And once they have the little check mark on it, it basically will force it to render cache if it's not already. If you're on a free version of Venture, of course you don't have access to Magic Mask. You can use Runway ML to mask out your subject. But if you don't feel like being bothered with any of that, you can create a freeze frame. I'm gonna hit R on the keyboard and select freeze frame. Then you can go into fusion. And if you want, you can just grab a polygon tool. I'm gonna go over here and hit invert. And then you can just kind of, you know, mask out your subject, just throw a rough mask over him right quick. And then you can animate the freeze frame if you want. So if I go back to the edit page, hold Alt, make a clone of this, and move it over to the side. I'm gonna hit Control D to make it one second. Hit change. Then I go back over to the effects, and say for instance, I want to slide in on the X axis. I can grab this roto effect, drag and drop. So while this is playing out, you just slide in, and there you go. Here I use the magic mask. So I'm gonna grab the Y axis now. So here you're basically gonna slide up on the Y axis and then it's gonna continue the clip. If I go and inspect this app, these controls are essentially the same as the clone effects. They just look a little different. I probably will update the clone controls and have everything look all the same. Just keep an eye out for your emails and join the Discord server. I'm gonna start making announcements on everything. Keep everybody updated within the Discord server about the updates. Since I want to start off screen, it's going to, the start position is gonna be negative one, which is basically at the bottom of the screen. And then the end position is going to be zero, which I want to basically move up on the screen to its default position. For the timing, this is playing out over 15.51 frames, which 
basically just 15 frames. The end animation is set up for 15 frames, but I don't have it activated because I want to, I want my subject to remain on the screen until the rest of the clip. If I turn this on, you basically will animate in and then animate back off. The animate start and animate in is basically the whole position. So if I want to play here, here, this is what it actually animates in. And say for instance, I turn this up, he's gonna zoom, he's gonna go back down and it's basically gonna hold the position of the animation until it gets to the frame, basically to the frame where my playhead was at, then animate in. And since these effects are not using keyframes, you control at what point in time you want the animation to occur. His origin X and Y is basically just the center X and Y. So if I wanted to, if I want him to animate on to the side or whatever, I could change the position. I just didn't change the name to center from when I built the preset out. And then these here are the animation in and out animation curves. And these are the built-in curves that come in with DaVinci Resolve. You can just hit the drop down and change them to something else. So if I change both of them, the animate in to elastic, so now you get this little spring effect. I'm gonna go down and delete this one. And one of my favorites is Red Shutter. So if I grab this, this I think this is on the Y axis. So yeah, you got Red Shutter, X, Y, and Z. Actually, I'm gonna delete this one and grab the Z axis. You can already see it's starting to take effect there. Now the Z axis, if you go into this drop down and change the fusion overlay, you'll be able to see your pivot point. So right now it's at the default, which basically will just zoom in. This here's a little bit more heavier, so you'll see it zoom in and creates this cool dis discoloration. I'm gonna let it render first. So now that it's rendered, you see it zoom in and creates this shutter effect. Instead of just zooming in back and forth, and I wanted to zoom maybe from the bottom of the screen, I can change the pivot point on the Y axis. So instead of zooming in straight back, basically back and forward, we go back and play it a little bit slower. You see it zooms up from the bottom, almost kind of like an Ant-Man effect almost like. And then the strength of the shutter, you can control with the control here. If you want a little bit less, just turn it down. You get less discoloration then. A couple of new ones are the hologram effects. If I drop this down here, it'll create this hologram like projection. You can move the hologram trail around using these control here. You move it up and down or in and out. So basically if you want to make it seem like your projection is coming off screen, you can move over there and then with the animation, make sure you go underneath your viewer, hit this drop down and switch it to fusion overlay. You'll see the pivot point and then just line the pivot point level with the tail end of the trail. Then when it animates in, it will animate from that pivot point. If you don't want the hologram to animate in, just turn off the animation controls here at the bottom, which is the in, which says in and out. Another new one is this aura effect, and just drag and drop to your clip, and it creates this customizable aura for your subject. Another new effect is the zoom effect. I can drop it directly on the clip, it's gonna create this zoom animation. Once again, if you go into the effects tab, pivot point controls where the zoom is gonna happen. So if I move it up, say for instance, I wanna zoom in on her head here, animation is zoom right on the head with the top part of the screen. And then since it's using the same controls, I can control the timing of it. So if I want to zoom in to take a little longer, I can go to zoom in time. Instead of it taking on seven frames, I can hit double click here and type in 24, which will be a full second, a little bit slower. Say for instance, I want to zoom to hold, I can move this playhead and basically have to crank this timing up or I can type in the frame. So if I go here, click on this, hit control D, I can see it's on 65 frames. So we just split it down the middle and just say like maybe 35 or so. It's basically gonna hold the zoom animation to the 35, the 35th frame. So it'll play out. Once you get about halfway through the clip, then the animation will take place. Towards the end, within the last, right here I got it set for seven. So within the last seven frames, it'll zoom back out. So no matter how long the clip is, you can just stretch it out and basically it'll correct this animation. So right now, and since I stretched the clip out, it's going to zoom in at frame 35 and hold until the end of the clip. I'll turn the zoom my time up and say, just type in 20. So now the zoom out animations take a little bit longer. If I wanted to zoom out the curve before the end of the clip, I just turn my end time up. So I got this at 35, so I'm gonna set, I'm gonna set 65, which is what the duration of the original clip was before I stretched it out. So now it's gonna zoom in and basically zoom right back out. And these are the animation curves. So if you wanna create like a bounce effect and hit change both of them to elastic, you get this elastic effect. The rest of the effects are more or less the same. I retweak some of them to make them a little less resource heavy. If you want to keep up with them, I don't, I don't have it fully updated right now, but if you go click on update and tutorials, this will take you to my website and take it to the product page. I hadn't got them linked in yet, but I'm gonna link in individual tutorials for this. They're more condensed in this video here if you need to go back and reference them. I re-optimized some of the titles. I actually added in, I think two or three new titles. This one here's a new title that uses 3D. Get the individual letters and zoom in, and then you can go into the Spectre tab. Say so you can change the font to anything else you want. Basically, anything that's on your computer already. And then, of course, you can customize the size and the shape of everything. And then, if you don't want all this text, of course, you can just go through here, select all, and delete it, and replace it with whatever you want. Another new title is this one. So this one here has an animation in and out, which I think I'm probably gonna, I might eventually add animation to all the titles or maybe do a separate title pack, and now you utilize Asher's plugin. And so you had the animation in and out that you can uncheck. So if you don't want to animate in, you just want to 
be stagnant. Cool, you got it there. And if you want to maybe just to animate out, it'll just be there playing. And then, then the animation will play out towards the end. So let's go down to transitions, add some new ones. It works really simple. It'll create this flash and then your clip will rotate in. And then the same thing is the right one. You just flash and rotate to the right. Then have this wipe transition, drag and drop. You can customize the distortion of the color or you can invert the wipe where you go from left to right and right to left. Then you can turn up the lift and the gamma, the brightness and contrast. You create a new look. This one utilizes the luminance of the clip. So if the clip is not all that bright, you won't really see that much. You can still make customizations though. So if I turn up the contrast here, turn up the lift. So now you can actually see the clip. You can control the wobble, which is basically the stroll, how quick it scrolls back and forth or how far it scrolls. And then also how fast it scrolls with the speed. The controls up top are grain controls. So it basically creates this like kind of grungy texture. You can turn it up or down to make it more or less. Oh yeah. This one here, I forgot to add a label to it. It's more or less a different strobe effect, kind of create this like trippy, like ASIC effect. And you can customize the color you utilize in this color wheel. I almost forgot for the titles to work, you need to open up the readme file. These are different links to the different fonts that were used to create the titles. Titles, and if you don't have these fonts installed, the titles will still work. You just have to go through and change the font styles to something that's on your computer. So if you bring a title in, it's completely blank screen. You click on this and then go into the, then go to the inspector tab and based on the font, you just change it to something that's on your computer and then it should display at that point. For everyone who already bought the editor's bundle, the LUTs and the sound effects are exactly the same. There's nothing you need to change. All you have to do is install the DRFX file. A question I had about the DRX file is, yes, it is the exact same name. I left the name the same where it's saying 0.01, even though this is a 0.2 update. But I left the name the same because if I didn't, it would have created a whole new installation on your computer, then you would have had it installed twice. So I left the name alone, so that way it will ask you to override the previous version. These three are the renting settings I use for my project. So if I go into the delivery tab, go into, click on this three-dot menu here, then import presets, you'll navigate to the folder that you downloaded from my website and basically we'll just select the render file. Well, the render settings, I'm sorry. To install the LUTs, go to the LeCog wheel down here, go into color management, scroll down to open LUT folder. You'll copy and paste that LUT folder into the LUTs here. You'll close it down, then hit update LUT, update list. Now, question I had about the LUTs, no, these LUTs do not convert your footage to Rec. 709. These LUTs just mess around with the colors to kind of give you cool little moody effects and stuff. So if you go into color management, Within the settings, then my color management, I have the output color space to rec set to Rec. 709 Gamma 2.4. So basically, whatever I render out, the DaVinci Resolve is going to render my footage at Rec. 709. However, if you use color space transform within your color grading, like for instance, here in this node tree, this last node here has the color space transform on it and it has the output color space Rec. 709 Gamma 2.4. So use this LUTs, I go back to my LUTs. And then say for instance, I want to add this black and white. I basically will put it either in this look folder, if you have a look folder, or basically any node that's before your final color space transform. And then you'll basically build your LUT or build your look in front of it. So all these nodes in front of this one here where it had the LUT on it is basically what you'll color grade. So you'll use this kind of like a base and then you'll go through and tweak and make your adjustments as you see fit. And since these are not conversion LUTs, they're not designed to fit any one particular type of footage. You can use them on anything. Like I said, they basically just use to kind of like set the mood or kind of give you a, a moody tone for your videos. And then the sound effects folder, you can just keep track of the sound effects folder on your desktop anywhere, or you can download the sound library, which I have right here. And then you just go to this three dot menu, add library, navigate to that folder. I'm not gonna do it here because I have a separate folder with all my audio in it. So you can either add this, to, if you have a, a dedicated folder, you can add this folder to that folder, or you can make this be your dedicated folder and you just click on this and then add it to your library. So now within DaVinci Resolve, you can just go into search. If you hold shift and select the eight key, which is the star, hit the three stars. I don't know why you have to do that, but basically it'll just list out all your sounds from A through Z. As you can see here, I have a crap ton of them installed and just list them out in alphabetical order. Or if you know the name of them, just go in and type in the name and then just drag and drop to your timeline.